Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Here are some techniques to help you master Keynote. So while pages, numbers, and Keynote share a lot of features, you have unique things about each one. For instance, in Keynote, you have the unique ability of text fields to auto-size the text inside. For instance, here's a text field here, and the text fits nicely inside it. But what happens if I add more text? Will it simply wrap? Well, it doesn't. It actually resizes the text to fit here on one line. This is due to a property here under Format, Text, and then go to Layout, and you'll see Auto Size Text. If you turn that off, it will stick to the actual text font size and wrap to another line. You'd have to expand this text field right here to show it all. But with this turned on, it will always fit neatly into this space, which is very useful for building slides quickly in Keynote. Now, when you make a presentation, you probably have a lot of different slides here. But if you want to remove one, you may find that you have to either maybe drag it to the end, remember not to use it, or delete it. However, you can simply use skip slides to skip some slides. Like say I'm making this presentation once where I have plenty of time, and again, where I have a shorter amount of time. I can select some slides. I'll select these two here, and then go to slide, skip slide and it'll skip these two. If I am on this slide here, and I advance to the next one, it simply skips those, but it doesn't get rid of them. They're still there. I can still actually go to them and edit them, and I can easily choose to unskip them like that to bring them back. By the way, if you like these videos, consider joining the more than 2,000 others that support MacMost at Patreon. You get exclusive content, course discounts, and more. You can read about it at macmost.com slash Patreon. Now, animating things in Keynote is really easy if you use Magic Move. The idea is you start with a slide like this, and you simply duplicate it. I'm going to select it here in the left sidebar, Command-D to duplicate. And on this slide, I'm going to move an object. So I have the same objects on these two slides. On the first one, I'm going to go to Animate, and then set the transition to Magic Move. So what will happen here is I transition from one slide to another, it just moves things gradually between the two positions. So for instance, I could bring in this image here and I can make it much larger than the slide and put it right there. And then I'm going to duplicate the slide and on the second one, I'm going to have a new position. And then I'll go back to the first slide, add magic move. And now that's my transition between the two slides. I can increase the amount of time and I could set the acceleration to none to get the proper effect when I go from one slide to the next. You can also animate things using a path. So I have an object here. It could be an image, clip art, anything. I'm just going to use a shape. I'm going to add another shape here that's actually a drawn line. So I'm going to create some points here like that. Hit escape when I'm done. I could double click and go back in and edit and move these points or create curves by dragging the middle dots like that. So now I've got these two things here. I'm going to select them both like that. Then go to Format, Shapes and Lines, and Make Motion Path from Shape. It's going to ask me to click the shape that creates the path, in this case the line, like that. And then I can see the path that this object will follow. So if I were to play this and click, you can see it follows that path. I can take the path here. Let's change the color to black so it blends in with the background. And I'm also going to move it behind the shape there. So now it's an invisible path. Now another way you can skip slides or go back to previous slides or jump around in all sorts of different ways in your presentation is to add buttons that link to other slides. So I'm going to create a shape here, use a rounded rectangle, uh, place it down here, and I'm just going to call this uh, skip to end. And I'm going to place it here on slide four. Maybe sometimes I want to skip right from slide four to slide seven. So with this selected, and it can be an image, it could be text, it could be shape, anything, you can go to Format, Add Link, and add a link to a slide. And then I'm going to select a specific slide. I'm going to say slide seven. And then I've got this set up. So now when I play, I can just advance to the next slide with a click or with a forward arrow. But I could also click this button and it will jump to slide seven. So I could actually use this even to create a table of contents at the beginning or an index at the end with multiple buttons or links in text to allow me to jump to different parts of the presentation. Now, a presentation like this obviously has minimal information on the slide. 
and you're expected as the speaker to be giving all the details. But it could be hard to remember those. You may have things written on cards if you want, but you're probably presenting, say, on a MacBook hooked up to a projector or large screen. In that case, you can see notes on your MacBook screen while the audience sees the presentation. So go to View and then Show Presenter Notes. And then you can add notes here uh, on the bottom of each slide. And this could be everything that you need to remember when you're talking about this slide. So then when presenting, you're going to see your notes. I'm going to do that here. I'm presenting in a window, so I'm gonna see my presenter display on this little extra window here. But you could set it up so you see your presenter display with your notes and even the next slide on it while the audience sees the actual presentation. You can even edit the notes while you're presenting. So while you're rehearsing, you can refine these notes. Now, while text boxes in Keynote have a unique feature in auto sizing, charts also have a unique feature. You can animate them, something you can't do in pages or numbers. So here, I'm just going to insert a chart. I'm just gonna use a basic kind of chart like this and keep the sample data. And what I'm gonna do here is click on animate and then for built in, add an effect. I'm going to add the wipe effect. And you can see it wipes from left to right. But instead, I'm going to have it go from bottom to top. If I preview it, it looks like that. Now, when you're doing animation with text, you can have it build per line or bullet item. But with charts, you can actually have it build per series or set or element. Let's do by series here. And when we do this, the animation will build first the chart itself and then each series. Now, when you have a slide like this, you may want to just have a solid color background, and that's fine. But if you go to Format and just click on the background to make sure the slide is selected here, you can change the background to a number of different things like a gradient, for instance, or an image fill. But you can also choose Dynamic. And there are all these different dynamic backgrounds. Like I can choose this one right here, the Jade Cliffs one. And if I scroll down, there's a lot I can change. Like I can set the colors to be something different. I can change the movement, the height, the peaks, and all of that to kind of customize it and create this really cool animated background. And I could have a different one on each slide. There are a lot of different ones to choose from. As you can see here, lots of cool different animations and they're all customizable with colors and other properties. Now, sometimes we have a lot of photos to show and it's tempting to just create a series of slides, each with a photo on it. But you could also just have a single slide and insert an image gallery. And you could move this around and let's say resize it like this. And you could drag a collection of images here. So I'm just dragging from a finder window into here and I put these in and it's gonna insert all of these images. And you can see I can go to each one here and I could change the caption for each one as well. And when I'm on this slide, I can use the arrow keys and advances to each image in turn. And when I get to the end, it'll advance to the next slide. So now I've greatly simplified my presentation. Instead of having a huge set of slides in the middle with images on it, I just have one with an image gallery. And finally, I'm gonna show you an element of a slide that's actually gonna give you a live view from your camera. So say you're presenting using your MacBook. So your MacBook's camera is pointed right at you. Meanwhile, you're in a big room and there's a big screen behind you. It could be useful sometimes to have you on that screen as well. So you can insert live video and it creates this rectangle here. You can move it around. You've got properties here. So for instance, I could scale it up if I'm too small there in the middle. I can create a different size mask like a square or a circle. I could even have it remove the background for me like that. And I can have this on the slide, make it really big if I want. And it could be on, say, slides where it's really important for people to pay attention to what I'm saying. I can have it here on this slide and I can copy it. And then let's say go to slide four and paste it on this slide as well. So if I'm giving this presentation on this slide, I'll appear and the next slide I won't. And then here I've got me again, but in a different location. So not only can you use those while you're presenting in front of a live audience, but you can also use them while you're recording in Keynote. So you can make videos that are kind of like mine where I'm there in the corner of the video. So I hope you find some of these Keynote techniques useful for your next presentation. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday 
hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.